Hello and welcome to this short tutorial from Dynamo Nordic in how to use the preprocessor ANSA and the postprocessor META in an LSOPT analysis. This tutorial will focus on the LSOPT part of the connection, that is ANSA and META related questions are not addressed here. To demonstrate the required steps for integrating these pre and post processors, we have chosen a simple example of a beam being actually crushed by an impacting plate. The example has four variables, where three of them, width, distance and depth, require geometry modifications. The interesting responses for this example are the mass of the beam and acceleration and displacement of a reference point on the impacting plate. This particular problem is also available as an example in the tutorials package provided by Beta CAE Systems, which is available for download at their site. Parameterizing your model is probably where you will spend most of your time setting up your LSOPT study. What is shown here is the ANSA model that has already been parameterized and prepared to be used with LSOPT. Morphing boxes have been created in this model in order to apply parametric geometry changes. As you can see, a so-called optimization task has been defined in ANSA. Here is where we find the pre-processing operations that will be performed once ANSA is invoked by LSOPT. This will be performed from the top down. First, variable values that have been produced by LSOPT and written into the text file named raildv will be read. Then, these values will be applied on the parameters, which, which will change the geometry and thickness of the beam, followed by a smoothing operation and finally an output of an Elsteiner keyword file. The effects of the morphing parameters can be visualized on beforehand in ANSA by right-clicking on the optimization task and choosing Simulate. Note how all variables change simultaneously in this animation, but you could perform this check with fewer variables activated as well. How to define the contents of the optimization task is very well described in the ANSA tutorial and is therefore not covered in this tutorial. But when you have finished defining the optimization task, you need to remember to switch from definition mode to execution mode before saving and exiting ANSA. Now we start off the LSOP part by creating a new project. Start with browsing for the folder containing your model files. Then set the file name for your LSOP file and perhaps give a, a description of your problem. And click create. Then we change the predefined Elastina stage to an ANSA stage. You open by double clicking. And here we first need to set the execution command for ANSA. Then we browse for the file containing the parameters which we defined in the optimization task in ANSA. And also point at the ANSA file containing the model. Depending on how many concurrent pre-processing jobs you can allow due to licenses and other constraints, you may set different resources on this stage as well. The default settings, however, is that only one preprocessing job will be run at a time. The next step is to add the Elastina simulation stage.
This stage will be run after the pre-processing and we create an arrow by clicking and dragging. As usual, we point at the LS binary file or we provide a command to the queuing system. The input file, on the other hand, is not yet created in this example. It is the output from ANSA in the pre-processing stage. There we call the output file rail.key. And let us use that name in the simulation folders as well. The keyword file needs to be transferred from the pre-processing stage folder to the simulation stage folder. This is done by adding a file transfer. Many people also use post-processing scripts to extract responses. In Meta, these script files are called session files and contain the post-processing commands for extracting the responses. How to record such files are well documented in the Meta manual. We start with pointing at the binary for Meta post. and then point at the session file containing the post-processing commands. The second file, which is also created when setting up the post-processing in Meta, contains the responses expected from the post-processing operation. By choosing these files in the graphical user interface, Responses have now been automatically identified by LSOFT and are reported under the Responses tab. In this example, two responses are extracted by Meta. The largest values of the time history is intrusion and acceleration for the reference node. We also choose to run the post-processing in the simulation folder. The acceleration and intrusion responses could also have been extracted by, for instance, using the no doubt interface on the simulation stage. Here we instead use the mass interface to extract the mass from the beam in the model, which happens to be part number two. The mass is read from the D3HSP file. Now the complete simulation chain has been set up. Let us choose to perform a design optimization. Let's say that we are only interested in an optimal point. Then we choose the SRSM optimization task. We set the acceleration response as the objective to be minimized. But since the acceleration response was negative, we choose to maximize the objective instead. We also choose some appropriate constraint values on the mass and on the intrusion. and the maximum number of iterations is set to 10. Before running the complete optimization, it is recommended to run a baseline run for debugging your setup. 
This tells LSOP to evaluate only one single point, and that is your nominal or baseline design. When you have run this point and made sure that all responses are evaluated correctly, then you are ready to run the complete optimization. Independent of your process, the results are always accessed in the same manner. The viewer interface automatically grays out the tools that are of no relevance for the analysis that you have performed. In this example, the optimization history is perhaps the most interesting result. As expected, the evolution of the responses reveal that the acceleration response could be lowered while retaining approximately the same intrusion and mass. Here you can see the final design along with the optimal design variable values at the top left. A comparison to the nominal design at the bottom right reveals that the introduction of embosses has a large positive effect on the performance of this beam. Thank you for watching this tutorial. For more videos and information about our services, please visit our website dynamore.se.